Recibes el cuerpo de Cristo. Good job. What else? Two more. What else? Today we're taking advantage of this beautiful Sunday morning and um, I teach the confirmation class. They'll be doing their confirmation on October. So today we're reviewing our sacraments and just learning about our sacraments, learning about our faith. This is what I've always wanted to do. Uh, even in my career, I want to teach. Exactly, it helps with temptation. It, it, um, it helps you deal with temptation better. It gives you the strength to overcome temptation, right? I, I want them to know that they can grow in their faith together, to make friends, to learn about who Jesus is, to be in a positive environment. Um, I don't know, what else can you say? It, it, it's, it's a beautiful morning, it's a positive day. They're meeting new friends, they get to talk, they get to listen to different perspectives, and they get to learn together. My parents brought us here. Um, back when I was 11 years old, they made the decision to bring us here so that we could have better opportunities, a better life, they said. <laughs> and, and we follow. I mean, yeah, there was no other choice, right? You just gotta follow your parents. As you know, many Hispanics are immigrants and many have left their families, their homes. I think it brings a sense of belonging, like, hey, I'm away from my family and I'm away from my roots, but my faith is here. I come right here, okay? I stand like this and then the Preach, the preacher sneaks down, he tells me to go, and then I go back. Like this. And I have to point down so I cannot hit. And that's how we go in and out. My name is Mariana. I help the preacher. Okay, I ring the bell like this. Then everyone stands up. I come over here. My favorite, favorite part is when I, cuando le doy el pino y la agua para que lo gare. Y también gano una, una más. La más importante que me gusta es cuando gano, es cuando gano la agua y lo pongo, con, se lo doy el padre porque esa es la última parte de lo que, van a, que vamos a comer el cuerpo de Cristo y tomar la sangre de Cristo. Y, y esa es mi más importante parte, la, el, el vino y también cuando, cuando ya vamos a terminar. Eso es muy importante. Bueno, <laughs> the preacher is very funny when, like, when I go, when I come here, he, he, he entertains too when the uh, math is about to start. He, tell, he tells me, chamaca, que tienes piojo de ojitos de <laughs> He's very funny. And, and that, and I, it's so exciting for me that he's there. And my brother, he's the most, he, I like it here most because my brother used to come here and now he's gonna be a preacher too. He's gonna graduate next week, next week. ¿Qué significa la iglesia para usted? Oh my God. Para mí la iglesia es todo. Es, es la escuela más importante. Dios es el, el maestro que nos, nos enseña, nos protege. Y por eso para mí es importante, es como, como mi familia que tengo más grande, porque Dios es para mí el maestro, mi papá y, y, la, y la iglesia es como mi familia, que este, todos somos hijos de él.
Estoy haciendo tamales de, de pollo verdes y voy a hacer rojos de puerco y voy a hacer mole y arroz. Los tamales rojos y verdes son para la Jais porque va a cumplir 50 años de aniversario. Mi nombre es Socorro Urbina López. Llegamos en el 89. No más que las comidas. Pues así me el... El padre llegó a la casa como en el 90, 90, 91, no estoy bien segura. Llegó con una bocinita buscando gente católica. Y Antón ya salimos yo y mi esposo y Antón ya le, se presentó con nosotros y dijo si éramos católicos. Antón nosotros le dijimos que sí. Y dijo, si sí pueden este, prestarnos su patio, dice, para que hacer una misa aquí. Entonces yo barrí mi patio, eran tiempos de no... Cuando están cayendo todas las hojas, ¿verdad, Manuel? Ajá. Están cayendo todas las hojas y estaba bien sucio. Y entonces ya barrimos yo y Manuel. Y, este, y ya vino él con una mesita y e hizo la misa nomás con, con cuatro, ¿no, Manuel? O sí. Seis. Hay agua, si no lo Women are big in faith. We're, we're strong on our, on our roots. We like to pray and we want the best for our children and for them to grow. Other than that, I think it's just a way of wanting to be a community and being part of it and, and not be afraid to, um, I guess, show who you are. The bad news is that we still have schools that are, have a great deal of inequity. We have a, a huge number of low-income and minority students generally who are not getting an equitable education and who are not getting the passport to the American dream and the key to the future that you and I would want for our children. What are the reasons for inequity? Well, certainly it's easier to have a great school if you have a lot of money. It's easier. Um, however, I have seen excellent schools that were in underfunded school districts as well. Having, having strong administrative leadership and strong professional teachers, there's no replacement for that. That's the key to good schools. That is the way that I get my teachers to be effective, is by having real relationships with them and trusting them so that if they make a mistake, they know it's okay. I know they're making a mistake out of an effort to be innovative. Almost every person you've ever met can name the teacher that made a difference in their life.
sitting right over there in that classroom, I wanted to be a U.S. history teacher because I had an excellent U.S. history teacher. Out of the last 10 teachers that I've hired brand new out of school, six out of 10 were former graduates. Most people who teach here, the younger crowd I went to high school with and the older crowd actually taught me. And for me to spend my life each day giving back to that community, I couldn't think of a better way to spend my life. You can't fix a school and make positive things happen unless you're making positive things happen as a community. One of the intentional things that we do as a faculty is not stand guard, but have a seat, mix in with the students, talk with the students. Um, so you so, sit with them. Yeah, there's Mr. Perry, one of the teachers, headed out the door with his plate. Um, they're going to sit with, talk with, mingle with the kids. There is one bit of research that says that the really good teacher will say that she's been a teacher since day one, that she or he lined up the dolls or lined up the younger brothers and sisters or the playmates and began teaching them. I wanted to teach from a very young age. When I started kindergarten, that's, since then, that's all that I've ever wanted to do. I knew when I was very little, I've always wanted to teach. Um, as soon as I arrived home off the bus, I started teaching my cousin. North Carolina Teaching Fellows was one of the most promising programs for public education that I've ever seen. And the, the Teaching Fellows teachers were almost they were incredible in the classroom. I was North Carolina Teaching Fellow. This was where I wanted to be. And, you know, things didn't work out that way. I ended up somewhere else first, but I, I got back home. My very best teachers in those schools, they also, uh, they've got a really firm grasp of classroom management in their classrooms. And it's not a situation where it's, uh, you know, they don't have all these rules that the kids have to follow and that it's a, you know, it's an atmosphere of, uh, you know, the military, you're like you're in a prison, it's not, but at the same time, they just have, they have expectations for the way things are supposed to happen and occur, and they're fair, and they're consistent, and they treat the kids with respect, and the kids respond. I have two kids at home that are my own, but then I have another 460 some here that are mine, and I think you've got to have that ownership in a child to say, you know, when you're here, you are my child, and I'm gonna do what's best for you while you're here. I think that, you know, we've come to realize that teachers do need more content knowledge, um, especially if we're going to have higher standards for students, then we're going to need higher standards for our pre-service teachers. We're right around 62-65% Hispanic, um, so that's a little bit of a different dynamic that you're dealing with. Um, about 89-90% free and reduced, so very high poverty level. The thing about testing, testing makes everybody look like this and everybody doesn't look like this. Everybody doesn't, we're all unique, we have unique qualities and I try to tell them that whatever is in here, whatever you you are made to express, that's what you are. They make learning fun. If it isn't fun, why would they want to be here? And if we lose them this early, then we're setting them up for failure later on and that's just not fair. That's not what our job is. A teacher teaches from her heart. She's got to have a big heart because not only is she an educator, she's a nurse, she's a mother, she's a sister, uh, she's a guidance counselor. I also take my, I always tell people to take my hat off because Miss Purvis, she's always a friend, a boss man, and a mother. Miss Bullard has been amazing. She's been the, and I've told her this, the principal uh, she should have gotten principal of the year to me because she has treated me. She knows how it is to walk in my shoes. We have to be able to make mistakes to have success. Our kids do too. You have to love your kids. You have to want them to be successful. You have to love what you do. Loving whatever they do. Going to ball games, going to, you know, plays and musicals and staying after school and helping them just learn basics, you know. That's what makes a good teacher. If they can't think and apply and problem solve, all the content in the world is not going to make them successful. Try to help them towards their goals as they go towards college. The rewards of being a teacher, it's not the money. You know, learning every day, I mean, every day I learn something new. Money, money has, is an issue these days and there's not a lot of money out there, especially depending on where 
you're located. When I hear of my kids being successful out in the world and at college, that's all I need. I'm a nuts and bolts kind of girl. I grew up on a farm and seeing that the students are succeeding and they come back and they tell me, Miss Morris, my engineering class at State, those projects are the same ones we did in your class. They have now in them that they want to be learners after school hours, in the summer, like for the rest of their lives. You start to hear them talk about goals. That's, you know, it's, that's rewarding, especially when you know some of the circumstances that they may be coming from. I, I really enjoy hearing about what they've become. I've got preachers, teachers, um, I, the, the social worker at the school I taught. Um, I have assistant principals in this county, uh, the supervisor for the maintenance department I taught. I have a doctor in Mexico. And, and the children, they're just uh, so sweet. We have very, uh, very seldom do we have a discipline problem. We are, we are very, uh, uh, we're very lucky here. We have some great students. I mean, just this morning, I was driving up for the second morning, and I have a, a young man who um, arrives a bit early in the morning. And as I drove by yesterday and today, I noticed that he was out here pulling grass out of the um, landscape. No one had asked him to do that. Um, class president. I uh, play sports, I run track, I play football. Uh, I'm the student body president here at Northmore. I plan to attend East Carolina University and studying elementary education. I want to get my doctorate in psychology. I play football, I'm more of an outdoors type person, I love to lift weights, I got a big family, and I just, I just love school. So far, I like band and orchestra more than any of the core subjects, but if it was to be a core subject, I love science and math. I got two, science and history. What's your favorite subject in school? Probably math. Okay, um, I play six instruments. I like doing an orchestra because I love learning how to play instruments. What? I play violin and the clarinet. I just want to be a music producer. Are you in the band? Or in the yeah, I'm in band and orchestra. Okay. Um, last year we had 85% of the graduating class head on to college, which was terrific. 3% wow. military and the rest um, headed to a job. Yes, yeah, so I'm planning on um, doing two years at um, Randolph for engineering. Nice school. Yeah, I'm going to Clemson next year. Yeah. What are you going to study? So, um, biology and music. Um, to study computer science and software engineering. I'm going to Sand Hills Community College. I am getting my bachelor's degree in nursing through Pembroke at Sand Hills. I'm attending East Carolina University, majoring in biology. All right. I have plenty of emails from my counselors, Mr. Brown, Ms. Purvis, telling me to sign up for scholarship. Uh, a great teacher to me is somebody that actually understands where we come from as people. And here at Northmore, we actually have the opportunity to have the teachers that live right here with us and know what we go through every day. And it shows that they care, you know, that they want you to move on, even if they're strict or with all the homework and all that, that they show you that they want you to get somewhere. Everybody knows you and your sister. I'm a child out of six, and right now college is what I'm aiming for. I know it's really hard for my parents to try and help me, you know, um, afford it, but there's always help everywhere. And my teachers, they help me look for scholarships, and they're just, they're really the support I need. I like Mr. Berger and Mr. Cox and Ms. Covington. I would like to point out my math teacher, Mr. Fury. He's, he's a great teacher. Well, I think it would be Ms. Purvis, my principal. <laughs> my favorite here, Ms. Bean, and I like Ms. Peralta. Yes, uh, Mr. Morris, he's awesome. I like him. Miss Crystal. What does she teach? She's social studies. No, everybody's pretty much great. But my English teacher's really, really good. So. What's his or her name? Mrs. Bean. Well, I think what makes a good teacher is a fun, a caring, and a rewarding teacher. Um. Well, she needs to be caring about about the students. She needs to be to love her job and to be really fun and make learning fun. I would like to tell them that if they come here, they'll have like the best experience ever. In the last three years, all the kids that I've ever sent home, I've never had a parent that didn't understand why. 
and that didn't support the school and say, you know, we support you, my student will do better and they'll be back, Ms. Purvis, to be a positive um, for your school. The teachers that my son has now are excellent. We always need to have a focus on helping our kids understand if you choose to come back here and live, in what way are you going to contribute? Being able to come away with college credits and stuff that was not here when I was in high school. My experience at Northmore, I mean, it was a great experience. Uh, I came in right after desegregation. During that period, you know, people e expecting trouble. I can honestly say it's been one of the greatest experiences of my life. I can't imagine going to any other high school. Our teachers have big hearts. We're small in number, but we're big in heart. Northmore High School comes from a very tight, how you guys say here, a, a tight need community. She came here researching for a change in life. And my daughter, the first year, was not that happy that she was moved from her friends. But the second year, she said, Mom, you know, I really like that this is, it feels like a family. Everybody talk to everybody. You don't see, you don't see the segregation. You don't see, you see kids, every color, every culture, talking together. Nuestros that the están, teachers están bien aquí porque are, es, are I, good here. What if the teacher of the year and the principal of the year was, the, uh, was a voting member on every board of education? in each school district. I know that when I was a teaching fellow, they actually allowed you to complete your obligations to the state in last years if you taught in certain communities, like rural communities, where they didn't have as many teachers. What if you offered scholarships to students if they would come back and work in your school district as teachers for five years, for giving their college loans? What if you got business and industry to support that kind of return on your investment. In the University of North Carolina system, uh, there are about 15% less uh, teachers going into teaching this past year than there have been the year before. And I, I think, you know, 15% doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you talk, you talk about a profession that's already facing a shortage of teachers. Right now, um, exploring the possibility of doing a language academy starting in kindergarten. Um, we've had a couple meetings, parent meetings, to see what our interest level is. And if we were able to do the Language Academy, we would do sort of an A-B schedule. <clears throat> and so on A day, um, our students in that cohort would be in English all day. Um, you would have two classes. One would be in English all day, one would be in Spanish all day. And then the next day, they would flip. And that way, when our students get out of that cohort at the end of fifth grade, they would be bilingual. And that's the opportunity that we're really looking at for our students is to make them more globally competitive. Um, if they are bilingual by the time they come out of fifth grade, then the opportunity presents itself that they could take that third language as they're going into middle school or high school. And we found out we're feeding a lot into NC State and into the ag programs. We decided to add animal science as one of our CTE classes. Um, have that class running this year and we're actually building a barn out back um, that will be up and running when we start school next year. Our goal is for every elementary student in, in Moore County to go home with five books to read. I just sort of plugged that in there. <laughs> So